live until 200 years old. Scientific Cures for the Aging Disease Turtles, unlike humans, do not continue to age once their bodies reach adulthood because they are negligibly senescent. It's theoretically possible for them to live indefinitely, although it is unlikely to happen in actuality. They will eventually die of injury, predation, or sickness. It has been documented that tortoises and their cousins, turtles, can live for up to 200 years without showing any signs of aging. A turtle that is 100 years old can experience the same feelings of youth as a tortoise that is 30 years old. This enviable trait may be found in both fish and amphibians. The idea of aging terrifies humans, and it is understandable why. Nobody wants to age slowly and painfully into a state of ill health and old age where death appears preferable to life. However, not everyone thinks this way. There are others who desire to live longer, perhaps even indefinitely. And while a life without aging might sound like something that could only be found in the pages of a fantasy story, research in the field of science suggests that the possibility is very much within reach. Hi there, and welcome to this episode. Today, we are going to discuss the aging disease that is affecting the human race and whether or not we will be able to find a cure for it in our lifetime. Stay on until the very end of this episode to discover some mind-blowing innovations and technological achievements that will assist us in getting there. The notion that the aging process is just unavoidable, inexorable, and merely nature's way dates back to ancient times. For a long time, death among the elderly was attributed to natural causes, even though the individuals had died of a recognized medical disease. However, an increasing number of scientists are calling into doubt our fundamental understandings of the aging process. What if you were able to fight your own death, or maybe stop it from happening altogether? What if the plethora of ailments that strike us in our old age are not the causes of these conditions, but rather symptoms? What would be different if we considered aging to be the disease itself? First and foremost, does the process of getting older meet the criteria to be termed a disease? The WHO does not classify it as an illness. There is a divide among scientists on this issue, but fortunately, a significant portion of them are of the opinion that it is an illness, and as such, research efforts ought to be focused on developing treatments and prevention strategies for the condition. One of the people who are at the forefront of this innovation is David Sinclair, a geneticist at Harvard Medical School. Instead of looking at aging as an inevitable part of becoming older, medicine should treat it as a disease in and of itself. Elderly people are treated like any other disease. In his eyes, they are just getting older. As a result, we'd be better able to deal with the aging process as a whole rather than merely treating the accompanying disorders. He claims that because we do not see aging as a medical concern, progress on developing drugs that might potentially prevent and treat the majority of our major diseases is moving much more slowly than it should. According to research, your metabolism plays a key role in how quickly you age. In order to assess how many sugary foods you can consume before feeling the effects on your waistline, your metabolism is not some organ or collection of organs in your body. As a matter of fact, it is the trillions of actions your cells perform each and every second of every day to transform fuel into energy and assemble the complex molecules your body requires to function. As you age, your metabolism slows down. Cells function incorrectly and inefficiently when the DNA is damaged. A decrease in your body's ability to break down and eliminate worn out cells might have a detrimental impact on your health. Your body's ability to accomplish the quality control duties necessary for good health is weakened by the stress it has endured throughout your life. The key for living several years has never been more pertinent than it is now. If DNA editing or gene editing is a key to living a long life, why is not humanity doing it already? The technology is already present, and studies are currently being conducted to determine its efficacy. CRISPR is the name of the new technology. Gene editing is possible with the help of this biological tool. The best way to describe it is as a pair of biological scissors with an inserting component that can cut DNA. In fact, it is so low cost that scholars or even a person in their own garage may perform it. Gene editing is now easier or even more possible than before. So this CRISPR technology is capable of quickly and efficiently altering practically any gene in any plant or animal, regardless of its species. Researchers have already used it to correct genetic defects battle infections in animals, and sterilize mosquitoes that carry malaria. 2012 saw the introduction of CRISPR. How precisely does this tool function? CRISPR is a method for locating a specific piece of DNA within a cell. When a specific segment of DNA is identified, the following step is often to modify that piece. It can be cut, but it can also be utilized to activate or deactivate specific genes. In the CRISPR system, scientists use a specialized enzyme as molecular scissors. These tiny scissors use an artificial guide made from RNA. 
a type of instruction messenger to precisely cut the DNA. The guide scans the DNA sequence until this target is located. Once the correct portion of the DNA sequence has been located, the enzyme will cut the DNA. The DNA then attempts to repair itself by searching for nearby fragments of DNA. The scientists have already introduced a new DNA sequence along with the guide, so when the DNA searches for something to latch onto, it sews the new DNA that the scientists have introduced into itself. Bingo! It's more complicated than that, but that is basically how it works. CRISPR has been used to successfully extend the lives of mice by the Institute of Zoology of the China Academy of Science. An important gene linked to aging was uncovered in the CRISPR study, as well as the fact that CRISPR treatment can halt or slow the aging process in some cases. The CRISPR treatment increased the lifespan and physical strength of mice by 25%. Biologists believe that replicating these results in humans as a clinical setting should not be too difficult. The idea of living in a dystopian society where people are able to obtain treatment to extend their lives borders on the absurd, but realistic. Using this technique may lessen the number of casualties, heart disease, and organ failure that patients need to be treated for. Life expectancy in the 21st century is expected to continuously rise as a result of technological and scientific advancements. According to a study published in The Lancet, men and women's average life expectancy will rise by five years in 35 developed countries by 2030. Is it possible to imagine a society without wrinkles? It is now possible to apply CRISPR topically, and the treatment can penetrate the dermis to a depth of a few millimeters. A number of pharmaceutical companies are working on topical gels and creams with the goal of combating viral infections that are harbored in reservoirs that are located beneath the surface of the skin. Therefore, the use of the topical cream based on CRISPR to promote collagen growth or increase skin elasticity and hydration might not be all that far out in the future. No one can expect wrinkle-free skin anytime soon, but could Alzheimer's illness be eradicated completely? Our aging population generally lacks the feeling of self-respect that comes with aging, and CRISPR could help us achieve that. Even though this may sound like a less desirable objective than having flawless joints and no wrinkles, it is possible that it is a more practical goal to work towards, at least for the time being. It will be some time before CRISPR is used to treat age-related disorders like Alzheimer's disease in the real world. Experiments on model organisms and ex vivo human cells were undertaken, but CRISPR technology is still in its infancy when it comes to human clinical trials. On the other hand, these findings indicate a promising beginning to solving a problem that has thus far proven challenging for researchers to address. No matter how implausible it may seem, it appears likely that CRISPR will one day be the key to stopping diseases as common and destructive as Alzheimer's, and we will see more from CRISPR in correction to age-associated diseases in the coming years. What are your opinions on the possibility of utilizing CRISPR to slow down or perhaps turn back the clock on age-related diseases? We would love to hear from you. Let us know what you think in the comments. We'll see you again in the next episode. Cheers!